From clothes to electronics, it's not hard to figure out where most of the products around your house were made. Dog food, you know, is labeled where it's made. Unfortunately, our medication, when you go and get your filler prescription, it does not tell you where it's made. Unlike other countries, including Thailand, Bangladesh, and India, the FDA doesn't require a made-in label on drugs, even though the federal agency estimates 80% of the ingredients and 40% of the finished drugs are manufactured overseas. Are we overly dependent on foreign drugs? Absolutely. No question. We've discovered the COVID-19 pandemic has delivered a one-two punch to U.S. consumers taking medication. The overwhelming reliance on foreign manufacturers, the majority in China and India, has caused a shortage of some popular medications. And the pandemic has forced the FDA to halt inspections of all drug manufacturers, causing some experts to question if some medications are safe. We are flying blind right now. Denish Thakur is a former pharmaceutical executive of India's largest generic drug manufacturer. He now works as a public health activist and says foreign manufacturers continue to try and beat the system. There had been systematic um, net documentation now from the FDA itself of people trying to fool the inspectors, people trying to um, you know, sort of take advantage of this honor-based system where, you know, they try and cut corners and, and supply substandard drugs. Tucker knows because he discovered his then-employer was lying to the FDA and making poor quality drugs, medicine that made its way to the U.S. Because of the, the pandemic that we're dealing with right now, basically said, look, we are not going to put our people at risk by making them travel to go overseas and inspect, you know, the drugs, the drug-making facilities that are located overseas which basically means that these facilities that are making you know, these drugs for us have no oversight at all. And that, I think, is a big challenge. For more than 20 years, the Government Accountability Office has continued to call out the FDA, repeatedly questioning the agency's ability to oversee foreign drug manufacturers. One of the biggest findings, the majority of foreign inspections are announced, sometimes 12 weeks in advance, while inspections of U.S. manufacturers are almost always unannounced. We recently testified just in December of 2019 that many of the concerns that we saw starting back in 1998 um, with the safety uh, and efficacy of the drugs coming from overseas are, are still here today. And that's why it's on our high risk list, to be honest. The FDA has struggled with inspector vacancies. In November, 30% of the nearly 250 foreign inspector positions were vacant. It's unknown how many ineffective or dangerous drugs make it to the U.S., but for the last two years, the FDA issued a large recall of blood pressure medication made overseas because it was contaminated with cancer-causing ingredients. We do have instances of where they have not been um, effectively in place. However, FDA did act, and so I would not tell anyone to stop taking the drugs um, but we do need to continued vigilance on this to ensure that they continue to be safe and that any situations that do arise are caught quickly and rectified. When Doug Campbell became an international investigator at the FDA in 2006, his team had to inspect just 100 sites. That jumped to more than 700 by 2012. Last year, the FDA conducted more than 1,000 foreign inspections, but some facilities go uninspected. They can't but, uh, keep up with it. It's absolutely like, again. So now they have to use a risk approach where only the you know the, the the operations that have the most risk tied to them. The FDA declined our request for an interview, but said in place of inspections, they are checking some imports of manufacturers with a history of non-compliance. The increased foreign inspection load is a clear sign of how the drug industry has shifted overseas. Did the pharmaceutical companies drive manufacturing out of the United States? Well, it wasn't the FDA. Um, you know, the agency didn't really have a bit. I mean, it's clear that, you know, this is a business and they're, they're selling pharmaceuticals as commodities. And um, ultimately, the idea is to find the cheapest source of your materials and um, I think that was the bottom that was the basic idea that, that drove it the, the way that it's gone. 
The Department of Defense has said our country's reliance on drugs and ingredients from China present economic and national security risks. The pandemic has had an, uh, an effect on drug shortages. So you, you think we're going to see more drug shortages over the next we're year? We're already seeing more drug shortages. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, China has slowed production, and India has stopped exporting some drugs and vitamins. As of late April, the FDA reports a shortage of more than 100 drugs made by multiple companies. Three injectable drugs commonly used for ventilation of COVID patients are all on the list as of April 28th. Investigate TV confirmed the majority are made overseas. This was an issue before the pandemic. To be this over-dependent upon drugs that we cannot fully verify are safe, to allow for unbridled globalization, to take this sensitive area of our own national health care security and ship it overseas, it's unconscionable. Nebraska Congressman Jeff Fortenberry says as a member of the House Appropriations Committee, this will be a priority. He says drug supply should be like our military equipment, all with the same stamp, made in America. It's wrong. It's a part of our own health security. It's necessary. I don't want any grave conflict with China. Uh, they're going to make certain things that they're good at. We make certain things that we're good at. We'll trade. But to be over-dependent upon a country like that for this critical uh, part of our well-being creates real vulnerability, and it's going to change.